How do you fix a Whirlpool dryer that won't heat is hands down one of the most common questions we get asked as appliance technicians. Well, in today's video, we're gonna show you how to fix a Whirlpool dryer that won't heat by showing you the six most common causes and exactly how to troubleshoot them. Also, make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because we are gonna show you the one thing you need today that's inexpensive and is going to save you a lot of time and more importantly, a lot of money. What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Appliance Dudes. My name is Peter Allward, and if you are new here, this channel is all about saving you time and money by showing you just how easy it is to fix your own appliances. Now, I just want to make an important note here that in today's video, I'm going to be working on a Whirlpool dryer. However, this video applies to any Whirlpool made dryer, be it an Amana, a Whirlpool, a Kenmore, or any other brand names such as Inglis, Westinghouse, and even Maytag. The more important thing to remember here is that if the door is on the front, the lint trap is on the top of the dryer, and it has a puffier back like this one here, then this is the video for you. And last but not least, as always, the tools and parts mentioned in this video will be linked below in the event that you need them. So if you do, be sure to check out the show notes. And with that being said, let's jump into the first part of this video. All right, guys, so the very first thing we're going to do is unplug the dryer from the receptacle in the wall. And what we want to do next is grab our multimeter and turn it to a voltage setting. Now take one of your multimeter probes and put it in one side of the receptacle and your other probe on the other side, and you should be reading 240 volts. Now let's go ahead and remove these nine parameter screws on the back of the dryer to give us access to everything we need for testing. With the back of the dryer removed, we can now access everything we need, starting with the thermal fuse. Grab your multimeter and turn it to a continuity setting and make sure that your leads when touched together are beeping. Disconnect one of the wires from the high limit fuse and touch your leads on each side. You should be hearing a beep and reading something between zero and one. Now let's check our operating thermostat on the side of the heater with one of our leads on one side and the other lead on the other, and you should be hearing a beep and reading zero. Now we're gonna check the heater itself by disconnecting one of the wires and putting our leads on each side. Now here you should be reading about 10 ohms. All right, guys, so the three things that we just covered, which are your high limit thermostat, your operating thermostat, and your heater are by far the most likely culprits of why your dryer is not heating. Now, the unfortunate news is that for a heater alone through a good manufacturing company costs about $65. Take a look at appliancepartspros.com, which is one of the United States leading suppliers for appliance parts. Just to get the heater here is $62.70 plus shipping. Now, not to worry because as promised, I've left a link for this Amazon page in the description below. These parts are just as good as ordering them on appliancepartspros.com. And not only that, you get the heater, you get your thermal fuse, you get your operating thermostat, you get your high limit thermostat, and even more. The best part is it is only $31.99 for all of this. Now, in the next part of the video, we're gonna cover the last two things that could cause your dryer not to heat. And if it ends up being your timer, which you'll see here in a second, the best thing to do is to get it through appliance parts pros.com just go to appliancepartspros.com type in the model of your dryer and then look up timer and with that being said guys let's jump back into the video let's check our second operating thermostat with two red wires going to it disconnect one of the wires and put each one of your leads on each side and you should be getting something between zero and two ohms here now let's check the timer of the dryer by turning it on a timed dry so the heating circuit closes what we want to do now is unscrew these parameter screws and remove the back panel with the back plate removed here, we're gonna be able to access everything in the back of the dryer here, including the timer itself, which we will show you how to test. On this particular model, you're gonna take a putty knife and slip it under each side of the dryer control panel here, releasing the locking tabs. Keep in mind on some models, these are actually held in by screws. Now you can turn the control panel down where we're gonna access the timer. And what we're looking for here is the thick black and the thick red wire that control the heating circuit. Take your multimeter and put a probe on your red wire and a probe on your black wire. And again, you should be reading something between zero and two ohm. All right, guys, now there is one important thing that I really wanna talk about here because I know some of you are going to ask. In the back of these dryers, there is something known as a thermal fuse, which you can see right here with two blue wires going to it. Now, a lot of people think that this fuse has something to do with the heating circuit, and that's just not the truth. These fuses are temperature sensitive, yes. However, they control the motor circuit, not the heating circuit. Now, a motor circuit would cause your dryer not to spin, and if you have a Whirlpool made dryer, that is not spinning you can check out our video that we made here and until then i really hope this video helps you guys and we will see you in the next one